Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Moon Lore series with Jenny and Laurie. We're here today to talk about the Gemini full moon, which falls, um, when is it, next Monday? Yeah, November 30th. November 30th, early in the morning, four something in the morning, I yeah, think. Yeah, 4.29. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we want to think about this is a full moon. So, it is the illumination of the cycle that started at the new moon on November 15th, which was a new moon, moon in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we think about these cycles, it, it's nice to relate them to the plant cycles and the new moon being the time when we plant a seed that grows throughout the course of a month, the full growth of it. Um, the moon is, the seed is planted at the new moon, it is fully illuminated at the full moon, and then it breaks down further and to start the next cycle at the next new moon. In the larger cycle, we've got a, a six month um, cycle. So this full moon relates back for the longer cycle, relates back to the new moon in Gemini on May 22nd. 2020. So, you know, you can give some thought to that as far as that longer cycle. What began in late May that is now coming into full illumination? And you mentioned something in that. And I know, you know, we're, we have no intention of talking a lot about politics here. But when, uh, when we were talking before we started recording, Jenny, you said that that was around the time that um, Biden um won some preliminary what was that do you remember biden won the primary sometime around the end of may um, oh. I, don't, I don't know it was exactly that date um and now what we're seeing is we still have things to be sorted out from the election um but it's very likely that we will see um things move forwards by this by this uh full moon on the 30th which is also a lunar eclipse which gives it a little bit extra weight so I'm very curious to see what is gonna, what turn events will happen by the end of this month, because this is the last day of the month yeah. um, of what we will see um, from that start six months ago. And there's other ways to look at it too, but the political one sort of screamed at us a little bit. Yeah, so. yeah. Then, it, it, it's nice, you know, thinking about the longer cycles. I mean, if you think about the little tiny cycles, it's two weeks, not a lot is gonna grow out of any seed that's planted in two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're growing lettuce, you know. <laughs> but seriously, yeah. uh, the longer cycles, if you look back in your own life, what was going on in late May? Mm -hmm. What did you just start? What began then that you now can see has really uh, flourished? Yeah. So that's one way really to think about it in these, these longer cycles. Yeah, and look at just other things in the news cycle if you're interested. I mean, certainly that was when a lot of civil unrest started happening. So there's just so much going on in our country right now and in the world, and you can really kind of track these patterns. And that's one of the cool things about astrology is they kind of help you track the patterns and keep, you know, keep track of what's related to what. Um, and then you can do that in your own life. Um, and then you're right, like the two week cycles, they're really short, but they're, but I think they're very useful for us in our human cycles, small things you're trying to do. You know, like I always just think of starting a meditation practice or there's a book that you want to read, or maybe you're trying to reach out to certain family members and you just need to sit down and write a letter or whatever the thing is that you're working on, but you can fit them into these little increments that can help you move things forward. Um, but you have to do the work. <laughs> it doesn't just happen. You have to make the decision, do the work, which is kind of the point of these human cycle things I feel that we're doing. So and you know, it, it's, it's, I like that you just said that you have to do the work. Um, and thinking about it, like, okay, you plant the seed at the new moon. It's not like nothing happens until the full moon two weeks later. It's like, you've got that in between point where you have the first quarter square. And yeah. that's when you have to do the work, really. That's yeah. when you plant the seed at the, at the new moon, a week later at the first quarter phase, that's when you really have to take action to push things to the point where the illumination will happen at the full moon. Yeah. And then a week after the mm -hmm. full moon, 
you have to release something, let something go, let, you know, begin letting go of the process to come to the next, um, the next new moon. So, yeah. you know, these are steps along the way. And when we talk about the six month um, process, the, um, the new moon in Gemini back in late May, there's a point right in between then and now, which was the, um, the first quarter of that larger phase as well. Mm -hmm. So these can get broken down and just watching these, these phases, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. And the first half of the cycle is very much associated with building. And so taking those actions and honestly, the first quarter square thing you mentioned, it's just a way of holding yourself accountable. Like what did you want to accomplish? And then being like, Oh, it's first quarter square. Like, let me do my thing. You know, let me do the one thing I agreed to do. And it's, it's really just a really nice way of using um, the natural world uh, as a, as an accountability tool for us as humans. And I think that's one of the super cool things about it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If you think about, I, I love thinking about you plant the seed and then at that first quarter, that is that little plant just cramming its way up between the rocks to, to, in order to come above the ground and illuminate. But that, yeah, that effort, that action has to really be taken. Yeah. In the middle. Well, I think it's interesting too, because, and then the second half of the cycle, the first half is building, second half of the cycle is all about meaning. And I think this is where it maybe gets a little esoteric in our Western culture, where it's kind of like, wait, what does that mean? But it's, that's the integration period of like, how did this thing that you took action on actually fit into your life and make sense in your life and bring meaning to your life and spur you forwards to the next things? Mm -hmm. And it's, there's a little bit of a more of a fuzziness about how that actually works. And I've been thinking a lot about that. Like integration is challenging and we tend to think of, oh, full moon, everything's done. Like, no, it isn't. You yeah. still have the whole half of the cycle, which is right. allowing it to have meaning. and Right, and allowing it to have so. meaning and sending that energy out into the world. You know, two and a half yeah. days after the full moon is the disseminating moon. Mm -hmm. And that's when you really push that information that you learned at the illumination out into the world. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. It, it I like is it. Pretty cool. It is pretty um, cool. So uh, let's, should we look at the chart? Um, um, sure. Sure. We are, um, so what we have this time is we are now in Sagittarius season. The sun moved into Sagittarius just a few days ago. Yay. Um, this is like a, a levity, a lift out of that dark Scorpio place that we've been in. Um, so now it's time to engage a sense of humor. It's time to like, that's when you're like sitting around the fire, telling stories, having some laughs, just that kind of thinking away from the, the some of the darkness. It's not totally gone, but we okay. lifted up from it. Um, and what we're going to see this time is that the full moon is in Gemini. So we are in Sagittarius season and the polarity is Gemini. So this is sort of this play, interplay between wisdom and um, information um, that they're two different octaves in a sense so oh. here here we are here's the chart and uh are you on are you annotating more yes yep there we have it the opposition between the sun and the moon now let's notice that the nodes the nodal axis is very close to that full moon and when you see that the nodes are close to the full moon. That's when you question, is this an eclipse? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's not a full eclipse, but it is an eclipse. This, mm -hmm. this is an eclipse. And what does that mean to you, Jenny, that it's an eclipse? Well, Some the astrologers eclipses... really put a lot of focus on eclipses. I, yeah. I don't well... put a huge focus on it. Yeah, I think in the, the simplest terms, all what we're looking at is, hey, this is an enhancement. It's a full moon with a little bit of a little extra oomph. Um, in a natal chart, if, if this was hitting your chart in a certain way, we might just be talking about, hey, just pay extra attention to what happens to you on those days. Like, just notice maybe something happens to you that seems really ordinary, like you run into someone in the grocery store, but it turns out that that conversation you had spurs you to something down the road that you hadn't even thought of at the time. So it's that sort of idea that maybe there's a little extra impact. Um, and just to tune in, put your antenna up more is all we're saying here. Yeah, um, especially, yeah. especially if that is close to a personal planet in your own chart. 
Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if this is landing on your natal sun, your natal moon, or your natal ascendant or midheaven, one of those sensitive areas, um, then you may want to pay extra special attention. So if any of you has that 20 degrees of uh, Gemini or even Sagittarius, um, just pay attention. Um, one other thing I'll say about the eclipse is there's different ways to interpret it. But one other thing I do like is the idea of um, the, so the shadow of the earth is falling on the moon during this full moon. So if you think of the moon as representing our egos, there's a little bit of an opportunity to like think beyond our own egos. So think beyond just ourselves, uh, think bigger um, and allow like yourself to just be part of a greater whole. Um, and I like the, that way of thinking about it, um, but I don't go too crazy with it. So just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I yeah. think it's a, a useful thought. Yeah. So um, in terms of that opposition, I, I just want to talk a little bit more about the difference between Sagittarius and Gemini, because mm -hmm. anytime there's an opposition, you know, you're, you're seeing two sides, two sides of the same coin, I think. And Sagittarius is so much about exploration and, yeah, like you said, humor and, and all that kind of levity. And um, on the flip side, we've got, well, this is like higher understanding also. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, the moon is more general, talkative, day-to-day uh, -day conversations. And this is kind of bringing that conversation into a place of more wisdom and expansion. Um, so, you know, th that's just thinking about those two signs, bringing those together. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think both of them are tied in. I've, I've just been thinking about this lately, are tied in with kind of storytelling. Um, yeah. So Gemini storytelling is the day-to-day, -day, the quick, just like, oh, yeah, this happened to me in the store, blah, blah, blah. Whereas the Sagittarius storytelling is the bigger, broader, deeper allegories and fables and, and myths um, that have in part deeper meaning. So both of them are like that chitty chatty, let's have this conversation, but there's just a, a broadness um, to Sagittarius. And I think some of that comes from the fact that it's, it, you know, the sign for Sagittarius is the archer. And that really is the arrow that is being loosed from the bow and is flying high above. So it has this great exactly. viewpoint, yeah. you know, and it's fun. It's like risk taking, it's high flying. It's like this arrow shooting through the air. So it really describes that nicely. And meanwhile, Gem Gemini's just down in the, you know, <laughs> picking up the puzzle pieces. <laughs> as I yeah, agree. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and this is, we were talking before, um, this is kind of a funny full moon in the sense that it's not attached to anything else. Like there isn't any mm -hmm. um, aspects to any of the other major planets. Um, there is a trine sextile to Chiron, the asteroid. Um, and I left it on there just because that's the only contact that the sun moon makes. But other than that, it's not plugged in. It is not plugged into Uranus. It's not plugged into Neptune. It's not plugged into our fun little COVID cluster in Capricorn. <laughs> um, and Lori's there outlining that one. Um, it is that one sextile trine to Chiron. So Yeah, and that kind of makes me feel like, you know, the, the fact that it's not um, touching any other planet puts it in a position of really being an outlier. Like it, it's just functioning on its own. It's sort of like trying to find these stories and these big ideas and perspectives of Gemini and Sagittarius, it's trying to do that and kind of avoiding or just moving ahead without all the heaviness and, and some of the other things that are going on. But it does have a link to this whole idea of healing. Mm -hmm. And it's hard not to bring in political conversations when, yeah. when you look at that. Um, and uh, I certainly, yeah, we're not going to be partisan here about anything, but there is a sense of we've got to move forward. Even if there are things holding us back, there has to be motion forward. Um, and mm -hmm. hopefully that motion forward can bring in some healing. Yeah, because there's definitely still, I mean, there's quite a bit of heaviness in this chart. You still have, you know, Pluto and Jupiter and Saturn are still together. They're breaking up, but they're still together in Capricorn. And this particular chart, which is of the East Coast here in the United States, you know, really showing that heaviness kind of holding down the bottom of this chart, you know, and as if the heaviness is still there. Um, 
and it's still being squared by Mars in Aries, which is adding volatility and frustration and this conflict we're seeing between this very polarized country right now. Um, you know, it's kind of, that's still showing up. We can all still feel that. So those are still going on while this other sort of more whimsical, so to speak, full moon thing is kind of dancing around a little bit. Yeah, um, that's and, interesting. Yeah, huh. you know, just kind of... Um, what are the other things about this? I mean, I guess the other thing is just looking at that. Um, Uranus is opposing Venus. So we do still have a Taurus Scorpio component here. Um, Uranus in Taurus. I, also, I just, I like to think about it as awakening, but it's also disruption to our systems, our food systems, um, our stability, oh, yeah. but also trying to wake us up. Yeah. So there's that. And then the Venus in Scorpio is, you know, that's, you know, Venus does not love to be in Scorpio. Um, so it's having to find beauty in the, in the harder things and the darker things. Um, it's one way to look at it. And Taurus but, doesn't like Uranus being in there. <laughs> no, it's like, stop like, I want to be stable. <laughs> Taurus is like, I just want to be comfortable and stable. And Uranus is like, too bad. We're shaking things up. <laughs> no, wake up. Um, and then the only other thing, let's see. Um, Neptune stands alone in this chart. So I just, I, I always just think of this uh, Neptune as the, oh, it's just all of us in it together in a way that we can't even articulate or explain easily. So there you go. Yeah, that, nep fun with that. <laughs> that Neptune is totally unaspected. Yeah. And that's, that is interesting. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. there's this piece kind of yeah rifting there trying to get attention it's like listen to me listen to me yeah <laughs> and i mean yeah. yeah i was just think about i just wanted to mention just too like the um it's an outer planet and it's invisible to the naked eye we can't see these planets so these are the bigger forces at work uranus neptune and pluto bigger forces we can't see in the sky and they just are kind of hidden at work both in our charts and in the culture and the world um, so that's, a, so that's kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Okay. So what else other than personal impact, what other thoughts do you have on this chart? No, I think we've kind of covered it. I mean, you know, we always think about at the full moon, where has the moon come from? Yeah. Um, and it, it's, uh, moon conjuncted sun in Scorpio. Um, on the 15th, and then what has it done since then? Well, it conjuncted all the Capricorn planets, so it had its boardroom meeting with those. <laughs> That's what I think of yeah. sitting down with all the CEOs and th that, and then it went and had its spa day with Neptune. <laughs> so then we went to the spa, and then it got really pissed off because it met up with Mars, and then it got the message from planet Earth that you know, things need to shift. And, uh, and then here it is folding all that into its <laughs> full moon. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's different looking at it. Usually when we are looking at sort of the pathway of it, there's different aspects that it's, that it's um, made that it's still engaged in. Mm -hmm. And right now with this, the only thing it's engaged in with still is the Chiron. And that's, yeah. you know, the opportunity for healing the opportunity yeah. as we work on this kind of outlier place, we really aren't tied in with all these other cultural issues, but there's an opportunity and a gift for healing in that process somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Cause we're so, I mean, we're so focused this year. We can't help it, but we're so focused on like, you know, the interactions between us and like, and then this pandemic, which has just dramatically impacted, of course, our economy and things like that, but also our social in interactions and how we just talk and see one another. And I mean, it really has just changed all of the fabric of that. Um, but in the meantime, there's massive processes changing as well. And to me, that's the bigger the bigger voice of um, the planet we live on and our relationship to that planet and what kind of relationship do we want to have to that planet. And um, it's, just, it's bringing up values. I mean, this is just, I know this is a hard year, but it's also a pivotal year in how we do things. And it's, it's a wake up and it's an opportunity to do something different. And I know it's, it's a hard year, but yeah, that's what we're being asked to do. 
Yeah. Um, and which brings us right to where, what's the personal impact? <laughs> yeah. What's the personal of, uh, impact? Yeah. So for all of us, you know, get your chart out, have your chart in front of you and look for where is Sagittarius in your chart? What house and what house is Gemini in your chart? And how is this um, lighting up your life in that area? Um, yeah. Where is it for you, Jenny? Well, I have uh, Sagittarius in the sixth house. So I just am seeing this like, I just have this desire to want to bring a little more levity to the day to day because it was just not an easy test to do. But um, it's just have a little more enjoyment from the day to day and um, focus on and just even if it's just calling somebody on the phone that I'm not used to doing or something like that. Um, but then the moon, the full moon is falling in my 12th house mm. and what is helping me at this time? Um, spiritual investigation. I have to meditate every day. <laughs> it's just being very, very helpful. Um, and writing things down on the page. So Gemini, um, calling me to just get, get the word out, um, for myself here. So yeah. Uh -huh. What about you? Well, it's funny because I'm sort of thinking of it about it. Um, it falls in Sagittarius is in my fourth house and Gemini is in my 10th. So it's about home and work and, you know, trying to bring some levity into home. You know, it's kind of interesting as we're, we're talking about this a few days before this Gemini full moon and realizing, you know, I was expecting for this full moon to have my boyfriend, my partner here with me. And, um, and because of the numbers and the increase in, in COVID, even here in Vermont, um, we've called off that visit. And I probably am not gonna see him for a good long time, which we went through in the spring as well. So it's sort of, you know, what I think really is, I thought it was going to be so devastating for me. And yet there's something in this. It's like, okay, I've got work to do. <laughs> I, I've yeah. got work to do. And I can, I, you know, yeah, I, I could carry on and on and on and go more and more into that on a personal level. But I think it has, I, I feel very light about it now. I don't feel devastated or mm -hmm. freaked out about it, which I did a few days ago, but as we're approaching this full moon, I'm seeing more and more the, the importance and the, you know, just getting clear about what is important yeah, and what, what I really need to do. I need to focus, hold down the home front and do the work I need to do for my clients and students and the world. So yeah. I think that's it. You have the storyteller lighting up the, area of your life um yeah. that you're doing through your work so great yeah, yeah. i'm gonna it's, put it's this chart away but, yeah. wait you know can you tell me if you've still got that up what degree is that gemini moon uh it's at uh it's eight degrees 38 eight. minutes so okay so it's an early degree okay yeah i was just curious how close it was to my north node but it's not close <laughs> <laughs> well so, Thanks everybody for tuning in. Okay, so I guess, yeah, that, that covers it. Thank you, Jenny, for, for doing this um, together month yeah. after month. I think it's great. So yeah. thanks everyone. Oh, one thing, share this video. If you see it on YouTube, share it with your friends. If it's of any use to you, um, come check, check out Astrolore on Patreon. Check out Jenny's um, website at, what's your website? Hiddenpathastrology.com. Yep. And mine I'm is astrolore.org, not .com. Yeah. So track us down. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, dear. I don't think I've stopped it yet.